Heavenly Father, we praise you today. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy. We can come together today in the holy house of God and open up the holy word of God and be led by the Holy Spirit of God into the things of a holy God. We thank you, Father, that you are our Father and we are your children. And we look to you today with praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for all that you have for us in this day, in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. So anyway, uh, uh, like I said, you know, we're hearing a lot about shortages. Shortages of this and shortages of that and, 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 and a lot of shortages and things going on. And so I was kind of thinking about that and, uh, you know, and, and just seeing in my heart what, uh, what I could do about, what, you know, what's going on. Things, uh, how, do, how do we deal uh, with what's going on now? What do we do? What's our part to play? How, what can we do to handle this? I know God has the answer, but do we have the answer? Do we need, the, do we need to be reminded of the answer? And then uh, did the word come to me, the, the word, uh, just like, not a word from the Lord, but a word come to me, priorities. Priority. And uh, so I kind of, kind of thinking about that and praying about it and looking in the scriptures and, uh, and, uh, and just kind of seeing what I could come up with. And then uh, it come, it, this is what come to me. The top three priorities. The top three priorities. And when, it, when I got that and that idea is what I got, I'm not saying this from the Lord, like the Lord speaking. If we'll keep this straight, will be all right. Because if they're priorities, then they have to be priorities. And so we're going to look at those top three priorities. That if we can get, keep the, get these in line and keep them in line, we can be all right. If we can just keep the priorities. And, uh, but, but you have... The world trying to pull us away from our priorities. We'll try to replace our priorities. But there are priorities in the Word of God. Are you here today? And so we're going to look at that. Priority number one, Mark chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Priority number one, loving God first and foremost. That's the top priority. The top priority of all priorities is to love God first. Now, the word priority, the word priority means superior in rank. Superior in rank, position, and privilege. Superior. Everybody say superior. You know, we, you say, well, well, sure, love God first, you know that. But there's a lot of people that don't love God first. We, you know, I'll get to this later on in the message about giving to God first. But there was someone we knew that said, if my grandchildren need shoes... God will have to wait on his tithe. You know what? She was placing the love of her children above the love of God. She got her, was prioritized things in her own place. Are you here today? Glory to God. Notice here, um, Go back to verse 29. I think it is. 28. 
And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, the, the uh, Pharisees and, and then the scribes, uh, perceived that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Now what he was doing was he was going to try to trick Jesus. So he, re he really didn't care. But he was just putting him on. So, so which is, which is the first commandment of all? Do you think that's top priority? Do you think there'd be anything else that would go above that? I don't think there would be, right, Donald? So he's asking him, and then what did Jesus say? And Jesus answered, The first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord God is one Lord. Verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The first. This is the top of the line. No matter what we do, no matter what all the priorities, everything we have in life, this is the top of the list. This is on the mantle of the fireplace. On the highest position that can be, there is to love God with all thy heart, all thy soul, with all thy mind, and all thy strength. So number one, we get that, we can get that worked out. We, we get that worked out and get it on the shelf. We're headed in the right direction. Why? Because we got a priority. And it's coming from Jesus. So we know we can trust that. Go to um, uh, 1228 Mark. Do it in the Message Bible. One of the religious scholars came up hearing the living exchange of questions and answered and seeing how sharp Jesus was in his answers, he put in this question, which is the most important of all the commandments? Which is the most important of all the commandments? Verse 29, Jesus said the first in importance is, listen Israel, the Lord your God is one. Go on. So love the Lord God with all your passion. I like that. So love the Lord God with all your passion. And prayer. And intelligence. And energy. You know when I got born again. I was born again from loving the world and the lust to loving the Lord and it flipped my whole life. Right, Jeanette? Flipped it. Why? Because I got my priority in the right place. I no longer loved, lusted Jerry. I loved the Lord God. It was a complete flip, complete flip. Like it was just flipped over. Why? Because I got my priorities right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here, with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. Go to, uh, uh, that, go to Matthew. Uh, Matthew twenty-two thirty-four. 34. Are you here today? I like you here in Matthew. And when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't get along very good. Charles Capp said, the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection, in the rapture. And that's why he said they were sad, you see. They were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the rapture. 
If I didn't believe in the rapture, I would be a Sadducee too. <laughs> if you didn't believe in the rapture, you'd be a Sadducee too. <laughs> Charles Caps, man. <laughs> Sadducees. Did you ever hear him say that? <laughs> so that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together and said, oh boy, we, we got something here going. Verse 35. Put it in the Message Bible. Go with the Message Bible. One of the religious scholars spoke for, for them, posing a question they hoped would show him up. You know, you know, that's why they're sad, you see. They're going to show up, the creator of the universe. People in the world think they're going to show up, Jesus. But they might now, but there's a day coming when they're going to be showed up. Yes. Thank God we made that conversion. Yes. Amen. Verse 36. Teacher, which command in God's law is the most important? Everybody say most important. Verse 37, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. Verse 38, This is the most important, the first on any list. If you have any list, if you have any list whatsoever, the top of that list better be love God. L love God with all thy heart and mind and soul and strength that at the top of the list. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Next verse. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. You know, I, you know, I was reading 1 John last night, just reading in my Bible a little bit, 1 John. And I don't know how many, I should have counted them. John, in 1 John chapter, 1 John, every so many verses he'll put in there, Beloved, let us love one another. I mean, he'd be just writing along about he that confesses his sins is forgiven and this and that, and then here would come this verse. Beloved, let us love one another. And then he'd go along and then he'd come along and say, well, God gave this commandment. Beloved, let us love one another. Evidently, the Holy Ghost is trying to get something through is to love God and love one another who's created in the image and the likeness of God. Especially in the body of Christ because the, 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 the God... God lives in us. So if I love Pastor Darlene, I'm loving the Lord that's in her. If I don't love her, then I don't love the person that's in her. And the Bible says if we can't love, if we can't love those we see, how can we love anyone we don't see? We can't, you know, the, the closest thing to God is people that we see. Are you here today? Yeah. Go to um, go back to Mark. Chapter twelve, verse twenty eight in the message Bible. I got I got the I got to find this. I I didn't I know what it says, but I didn't put it in here. One of the religious scholars came up hearing the lively exchange of questions and answers, seeing how sharp Jesus was in an answer. He put in this question, which is most important of all the commandments? Which is the most important of all commandments? Next verse. And Jesus said the first, is in, the first in importance is the Lord God is one. Verse 30. So love the Lord God with all your passions, prayers, intelligence, and energies. Okay. 
Hmm. Okay, let, let's do this. Go to Matthew 22, 36. Now, you can put it in the King James. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Next verse. Now look at here. The, the, the uh, scribe says, which is the great commandment? Jesus says this is the... Jesus said this is the... And the great. He added to it. He didn't just say this is the great. This is the first. First and foremost. Position position of position of that of the above all foremost here we got great and first important in position and order of importance so not only was it great it was first are you here today and it says in the king in the message bible that they were, um, what were those? They were just little uh, nuggets, n little plugs you plug into the wall. And he said, you can hang on this, the law and the prophets hang on loving God. So what I'm saying is, you can hang your life on loving God. With all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your mind. You can hang your life on it, and it don't matter. It ain't going to fall. Hallelujah. I have like a, a, a deal that you can hang clothes on, but you better not hang too many. <laughs> I mean, it's not made to hold all your clothes. <laughs> it could collapse. But love in God with all your heart will not collapse. Amen. You can, so this is the first and great. Everybody say first, first. and great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see. Superior. Superior, uh, superior of rank and chief. Hallelujah. Number two. Number two, and I'm, I give these, I'm, I'm not saying the like number one is most important, number two is second most, number three is the third most. I'm saying they're all the most. All right? Number two, uh, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and the, and the, and the first fruits of all your increase. Honor God with your first fruits. Honor God with your first fruits first. You know a lot of people, they pay, they, they, they get what they want, they pay their bills, and then they give what's left over. But here it says, if you want to keep your priorities right, you honor the Lord first with your first fruits. Then you go from there. I liked what one minister said. Somebody come to him and says, well, I can't tithe. I don't have the, I don't have the money to tithe. And he says, if you'll start tithing, then you'll start having the money to tithe and pay everything else. But as long as you don't, 
you will never have enough to tithe because you're not honoring God first. You know, I, you know, when I got born again, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was because I was single or not. But when I heard about tithing, I just started tithing, you know. I mean, when I would get whatever I would get, the first thing I would think of, now 10% of that, I didn't need a deal like you go to the restaurant, you know, and they tell you how much to tip, you know, and all that. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I mean, I was just, and uh, they said tithe, so I just tithe. Pastor Darlene taught Todd to tithe when he was pretty young, four and a half. And that tithe was first, wasn't it? Glory. Why? Priority. You know, you can you ask people. You have somebody that comes to you and say, man, I'm struggling with finances. Say, where's your tithe? Well, what do you mean tithe? The first goes to God. Exodus 23, verse 19. The first, I like that, the first of the first fruits. <laughs> so the first fruits, the first of the first fruits is 10. You see that? The first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. So number two, or number two on the list, is, is giving to God first. Give to God first. Give to God first. If you'll get that in your mind, You know, we had someone tell us. We like where we're going to church now because the pastor never says anything about giving. Well, that person used to go to our church and they never give. So I know they would really like that because they don't say anything about giving. But I don't want to have to stand before God and be held responsible for not taking a, receiving offerings and providing for you to give. Because you can limit your life if you don't give as a priority. Are you here today? Are you seeing that? The priorities. You know... Uh, David said, I was young, and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Evidently, he was a tither. Evidently, he just did it, you know, and, and he, never, he never saw the righteous forsaken. Uh, why? Because of priority. Are you here today? There has to be a priority. When you're prioritizing things, you better put that up the ta-ta. It's the giving to God first. Well, I, what was it somebody said to a minister? Well, I tithe now and then. And the minister said, well, you're not a tither. Tithers tithe all the time. What is a tither? Somebody that gives a tenth to God all the time, you know. Now, I know it don't say a deal, but it's, but it is, it's the, the tenth is the first, is the first fruits the first now here's something that, that ought to help you brothers and sisters this will help you the tithe 
belongs to the Lord. So you and I have no right to do with the tithe that we want to do because it belongs to the Lord. And we're not really giving him the tithe. We're, we're honoring him with the tithe because the tithe already belongs to him. And it's holy unto the Lord. When it gets in his hands, it's holy unto the Lord. Are you here today? So, you know, because uh, I'm going to show you in the word of God. Uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm going to show you Malachi chapter 3. Verse 10. You know, there's been, uh, I mean, not really, but there's been like mega wars fought over Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Well, we're not under the law. We don't have to do this and that. And when anybody says that, I'm saying, are you wanting to get out of having to give? Because that's all that is, is trying to figure out how to keep from having to give and everything. You know, but I don't think it, it hurts us to do it. You know, we don't, have, we don't do it because we're not under the law. But, it's, but look at what it says. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows. Everybody say windows. windows. Plural of heaven and pour you out a blessing. If you don't want a blessing, don't tithe. Just do without. But if you want a blessing, it's your priority. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. That don't sound like shortage, does it? Yeah, but you know, there's some things that are just a shortage. Well, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. It's all in the earth here. There's not, nothing lacking in it. It might take a little. It wouldn't. I mean, I say it might take. It ain't nothing to God. I mean, go and go and read in the Old Testament. Sometimes he had, to he had to get ravens. Well, the ravens weren't clean birds. But evidently they washed their paws or their hooks or whatever they called them because he used the ravens anyway. He used the ravens. God, you keep your priorities right, brother and sister. God will get it to you. Yes. He's committed to it. He has to. Are you here today? Say yes. yes. Glory to God. Number three. Number three, Tom. Number three. Matthew chapter 6. Are you here today? Yes. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 6. Let's start with verse... Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. If your treasure and your money's into you and your provision only, that's where your heart is, is into you. Amen. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Your heavenly Father feedeth them. And then look at this. Are you not what? 
He didn't just say, are you not better? He said, are you not much better than they? Well, notice they don't sow, they don't reap, and they don't gather into barns. But we sow, we reap, and we gather into barns. They're limited. The fowls of the air are limited because they don't sow, and therefore they don't reap, and they don't have enough to put in the barn. But we, being much better, we get to sow, we get to reap, and we get to put it in the barn. Hallelujah. Not are we, not are we only much better, but we're much better off. I was, I was, I think it was Friday. I was downstairs and I was studying and notes and stuff for my message. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking out. And all of a sudden I looked out and there's a bird in the backyard. And that, he's kind of looking around, kind of looked over toward me. And I kind of sat and I thought, he's probably thinking, thanks for those seeds. You know. And uh, I'm thinking, don't eat too many. <laughs> but he didn't, he wasn't toiling or nothing. But the thing of it is, God gets, you're much better. And because you're much, much better, you can sow and reap and, and put it into a barn. Hallelujah. If you sow. Are you here today? Verse 27. And which of you, by taking thought, can add cubits unto your stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. So he's talking about raiment here. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? And here's, here it says, O ye of little faith. I think he's saying not much more will he clothe you if you'll just use a little faith. I mean, if you'll just use enough faith to sow, you'll reap. And you'll have plenty to put in your barn if you'll just have a, just enough faith to sow. Because where is it in one of the Gospels? It says, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed. Mustard seed faith. You'd say. If you can't say, you don't have very, you got less than less faith. Are you here today? So he's talking about this. Now notice he, he goes back here. He goes again, therefore. See, he go, 27, he says, Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit? One time we was at a meeting with Norval Hayes and this guy, he had this guy testify and he was pretty tall and he testified when he, he went to Norval and he was short and he asked Norval to pray for him that he would grow. And Norval Hayes prayed for him and one year he grew nine inches. Well, he didn't do it by worrying. He did it by the power of God. So Jesus is saying, you know, which of you, by taking thought, by, ta you know, taking thought about all these shortages 
ain't, it's not going to add anything to you. Amen. And what he's saying here is, is watch out. He said, don't be saying. Don't be saying. What are we going to wear? What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? You know, you think, well, that's not worrying. Well, evidently it's saying something like we're not going to be provided for. Because he's saying, you know, we're, we're, we're going to wear what we, what we have to wear. We're going to eat what we have to eat. You know, there was that guy overseas that had that mission, that orphanage. And he said lots of times they sat down to eat and there wasn't nothing there. And he didn't say, what are we going to eat? He said, we're going to pray and thank God for providing. Yeah, right. Evidently, he must have been a giver. And evidently, he must have had God first yeah. because he got, they were provided for. Brother Copeland was out in Florida one time ministering and they, uh, they, um, uh, he went to this uh, guy's house afterwards to eat and, uh, uh, and he said to the lady, the hostess, says, uh, when are we going to eat? And she said, when our food gets here. And uh, he said, what do you mean? She said, well, we'll believe in God because we don't have the food or something. And he, Brother Copeland said, I was coming out of the anointing about then. I'm thinking... <laughs> Why did they bring me here? And it wasn't a little bit. Somebody knocked on the door and they went to the door and there was a box of steaks that they had brought for them. God will provide for those that love God and give to God first and love God first and the other things of God first. Are you here today? Glory be to God. You say, what are we going to do? We're going to trust God. You know, what are we going to do? They say it's, it's worse and it's going to get worse. What are we going to do? Well, if we're smart, we're going to trust God. You know, if it's smart, we're going to love God first and we're going to give to God first and we're going to seek God first if we're smart. Hallelujah. Are you here today? Hallelujah. So here, therefore, take no thought saying. And you've heard, I'm not going there because that's not the message. If you take the thought and you, if the thought comes, it's not yours till you say it. And that's what he's saying. Take no anxious thought saying. That's what it says in the Amplified Bible. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. You don't have to ask the lost what they're seeking. Just follow the money. You know what they're seeking. It already says it in the Word here. But... Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. God knows you have need to have clothes. He don't want you going around. You get arrested. So He knows. I mean, you know, I, I thought about that one day. Why would God put me on this earth and not take care of me? Better off if I wasn't put on the earth. That's the way I thought about it. And then I got a deal. But your father knows you have need of all this. He knows you have need. He knows that you need uh, baby formulas. He knows you need gas for your car. He knows you need these. He knows. Then the next verse. But seek first the kingdom of God. Number three, seek God first. Doesn't say seek God only, does it? Huh? It says seek God first. What's that? Priority. Where we get in trouble lots of times is when we've done everything else and it's failed. Well, we better seek God. I know. One time we had. A couple we talked and and they said um, we was going through some things and I said have you prayed yeah have you got have you done this yeah have you done that yeah hey, are you standing yeah well then you stand so a few months later something a couple was talking to him says we think we need to go talk to pastor because we're dealing with something and they says have you done this yeah. Have you done that? Yeah. Have you done this? Yeah. Then you don't need to go to pastor. He's going to tell you after having done all, stand. (laughs) 
But so, so here we are. So what? Look at here. All of this stuff he's talking about that we don't need to talk about. What are we? How are we going to? What are we going to wear? What are we going to drink? What are we going to eat? He's saying all. Look at here. He said, if we'll do the things right thing, and all these things. Will be added. Doesn't say subtracted. Will be added. All these things shall be added to you. Whatever it is, whatever things we have, if we love God first, if we give to God first, if we seek God first and walk in line with God, it's going to be added. It's will. Look at here. It says, all these things shall. You know, when we started the church, we never went without, but we had to suck it up a little sometime. But it was added. It was added. It was added. The, all these things shall be added unto you. Put it up there in the New Living Translation. Seek the kingdom of God above All else. Is that priority? And live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That if we do those things, you'll give us everything we need everything we need notice live righteously live righteously you know second uh, corinthians chapter 10 verse uh, 4 i believe it is so though we walk in the flesh we don't war after the flesh for the weapons of warfare are not carnal but mighty through god mighty through god and you could say mighty through our relationship with God. We can't live far from God and have this. It's through God. It's through our relationship. It's through our priorities. Loving Him, giving to Him, and seeking Him. It all brings everything else about because of our position with Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's do it right. Uh, So, uh, yeah, we have time. We have time to do that. Matthew, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Everybody say, God has blessed us with all. God has blessed us with all. So how do we get this all? We do our part in receiving those things. Ephesians, uh, one translation I have, it says that God has blessed us with all that heaven enjoys. Well, if you, you know, Deuteronomy says you can have days of heaven on earth. Well, if you have days of heaven on earth, you have to be able to have the things that that, earth, that heaven has. So here it says, he, He's blessed us with everything that heaven has. That we, ha, that, that, that we, He blesses us with that. I'm going to show you something here on this. In Luke chapter 12, verse 29, 32, He's talking about the same thing in, uh, in Luke chapter 12 here as He's talking about in uh, Matthew, Matthew 6. But seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be of a doubtful mind. Notice 
Notice it says, seek not what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. That has to do with doubting. See, if you're seeking these things, you're doubting God's provision. You see that, Dolores? See that? So don't do that. So then the next verse he says in verse 30, For these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you have need of these things. You don't have to go to God and say, hey, don't you know? God, don't you know? And God is not going to go, oh, I forgot about that. No. <laughs> he was there for you got there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ne next verse. But rather seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, you're not seeking something that's lost. In fact, in the Amplified Bible, you're seeking, you, you, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, His way of doing and being right. How does the kingdom of God operate? Well, one place in, in Mark chapter 4 is the sower sows the, the kingdom of God works on sowing and reaping. Shall be added unto you. Verse 32. Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So if it's His pleasure to give us the kingdom, it's His pleasure to give what's in the kingdom. We just need to seek to have an understanding. In, in Hosea 4 it says, My people are destroyed or go without for a lack of knowledge. If, you never, if people aren't taught to give and if they're not taught to put, have God first and all this, they can be missing out because they don't have God first and they don't give to God first and they don't seek God first. It's still not God's fault. It's because they don't know. You see what I'm saying? It's the Father's good pleasure. It's the Father's good pleasure. Folks, never, I know you don't, I know you know this, all of you. God is not holding out. God is giving out. If, any, if you can't think of anything else to say, God will provide. God will provide. It's His good pleasure to provide. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, I right, go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Let me show you something here. I'm going to show you why it's so important. What you're being taught. Verse 3. According as His divine power has given unto us all. Huh? Is it there? That pertains to life and godliness. How does he do it? Through the knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, my f people do without because of a lack of knowledge. If you don't have knowledge on something, you know, like Brother Hagin telling about praying a certain way, and he says, praying the wrong way. Tell him about a couple to come to him for prayer. And uh, Brother Hagin got him the Word of God, put him the Word, and the guy says, Man, half of our prayer, we need to throw it out. So Brother Hagin kept ministering, and that guy says, we need to throw the whole prayer out. <laughs> they kept asking God to heal her, and God had already healed her. And, and they were being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But they got the knowledge, see, the knowledge. Notice here it says, through the knowledge. He has divine power. It's given us to all things that pertain in life and knowledge through the knowledge. That's why it's important getting knowledge. And you can't get, if you don't get in the Word, you're not going to get knowledge. Because in the Word, you get knowledge. And then you get knowledge, and then you get the things that He's already given that pertains to life and God. Amen. Are you here? So this is... Uh, Go back to Matthew 6.33 in the Message Bible. 
Are you here today? What's that first word? What is it? Steep. Steep. Steep your life in God reality. And I... God reality. God reality. God exists in you. That's God reality. He exists in you. God initiative, self-reliance or dependency. Steep yourself in God's existence. Steep yourself in God's presence in you. Steep yourself in God's uh, initiative where God's going to take care of you. Steep yourself in God's provision. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. What? If you get on God reality, God initiative, and God provision. And here's the end of the message. He that loves God first will give God first and seek God first. He that loves God first will give God first and seek God first. First, and it's all comes out of loving God first. Priorities, priorities, loving God first, giving to God first, and seeking God first. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus.